Every week, the Xfinity editors pick the TV show, movie, or special event they are most excited about right now. And this week, we start with me. The premiere I'm most excited about this week is the brand new limited series, The Artful Dodger, which drops this Wednesday, November 29th on Hulu. Let's take a quick look at a trailer. Dr. Dawkins, you've recently joined us in the land of the misbegotten. Just as a surgeon, Lieutenant. And before then? Escape convict playing doctors now. That's got to be an issue where I'd ever discovered. Snatch the rubies, happy days. And if one word gets out about our past... You could break from your life of thievery. My thievery has been very occasional. If you have any ambition, then you have to fight for it. The noose has been strung. Sometimes... we must hurt... in order to heal. I think it's terribly exciting. It is a little. This series has been billed as a spin-off of the Charles Dickens classic novel Oliver Twist, in which we find infamous pickpocket Jack Dawkins, a.k.a. Jack Dawkins, a.k.a. the artful Dodger, all grown up and living in Australia, where he lives a respectable life as a surgeon. But the reemergence of Jack's former crime boss, Fagan, threatens to reveal his true identity as an escaped convict. The Artful Dodger stars Thomas Brody Sangster, who you may know from Game of Thrones, The Queen's Gambit, as the little boy in Love Actually. He was Liam Neeson's son. Um, he plays Jack Dawkins, David Thewlis as Fagin, and Maya Mitchell as the local governor's daughter. There's something about the holiday season that always puts me in the mood for period dramas like this, I suppose. It's probably because of my love for Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and this is sort of Dickens. Um, I also love David Thewlis, who most people know as Professor Lupin from the Harry Potter series, even though he's had quite a successful career out of outside of that franchise, and I'm sure it drives him crazy that people only know him from Harry Potter. Um, but this is absolutely one that I'll be watching this week. Uh, does it appeal to either of you, Sammy, Quam? Dr. Dawkins. Dr. Dawkins. It does. This is, I agree with you on period pieces around the holiday season, like winter and period pieces just like kind of go hand in hand to me. Um, I'm not like as familiar with Oliver Twist, weirdly, but I feel like maybe you don't need to be in order to watch this one. Yeah, I wasn't either and caught up in like five seconds. He used to, <laughs> he used to be a child pickpocket and this Fagan guy was like, the leader of the pickpocket orphans. I also didn't even realize, I, I was like, is Oliver Twist the name of one of the characters? And yeah, it is oh, in the okay. book. But like, he is not Oliver Twist. Our, the Artful Dodger was like Oliver Twist's best friend. Uh -huh. It really did a, a deep dive. Now I don't have to read the book. <laughs> so anything that keeps me from reading uh, is fine by me. Um, I was going to say this show does look interesting. I mean, I do love a good uh series where someone is presenting to be someone that they're not um so i but i never got the idea of like period pieces in winter time meshing that was never me though so i would be a, the oddball in this group that is all right uh sammy what are you excited about this week all right my pick for this week is the netflix film may december which has been in theaters for a few weeks now but is coming to netflix this friday december 1st Let's take a look at the trailer. How do you choose your roles? I want to find a character that's difficult to, on the surface, understand. Were they born or were they made? It's such a pleasure to meet you. You are so sweet. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for doing this. It's so generous. Oh, well, I want you to tell the story right, don't I? Do you remember when you first met? You came to the pet store looking for a job. It was summer after sixth grade? Seventh. Seven. Why do you want to play me? When they sent me the script, I thought, here is a woman with a lot more to her than I remember from the tabloid. What would make a 36-year-old woman 
have an affair with the seventh grader. People, they like see me as a victim. I wanted it. Ooh. <laughs> a very, ooh. <laughs> I haven't heard, so heard or seen too much buzz about this movie which is surprising to me, mainly for the cast. Obviously, from the trailer, you saw Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, as well as Charles Melton, who I have loved since I first watched in Riverdale, and it's cool to see him take on a more serious project. As you could tell by the trailer, this is sort of a dark, twisted drama comedy I have also read that it folds into, following an actress played by Natalie Portman, who is researching the role of a woman she's going to play in an upcoming movie. Obviously, it's much deeper and darker than that, as it has to do with the affair of a teacher um, and her student back almost two decades earlier. Um, I also have to mention that it's directed by Todd Haynes, who also directed Carol and Dark Waters, which are two excellent films. I think Dark Waters was grossly underrated. Um, this movie also premiered at Cannes earlier this year and was nominated for the Palme d'Or. So it has a little bit of Oscar buzz and contendership, I think. Um, like I mentioned, it's available to stream later this week on Friday, December 1st. But I don't know. I feel like along with the period pieces winter thing, I feel like dark sort of twisty, sinister dramas also kind of lend itself to this season so i don't know it's made it it's made its way to my list i'm curious if you both know what the title may december refers to because i think that's kind of an outdated term that not everyone knows do tell yeah tell oh oh really okay perfect i'm glad i asked this then so may december refers to a romance where the two members of the relationship are far apart in age one member of the relationship is in the May or summer of their life, while the other is in the December or winter mm. of their life. Mm. And that is what May, December, you might now, now you're going to see the term May, December romance everywhere, but that's what this is referring to. I was, I was like in my, I was, it was a long time before I actually had heard that term and knew what it meant. <laughs> you learn something new every day. But a random question what is with y'all in like these random genres of movies and shows <laughs> that you want to associate with the holiday season i i, I thought it was time to be cheery and, and, and joyful <laughs> <laughs> so well, like, oh i love a dark show during the holiday season <laughs> all right so maybe not the holiday season but like the winter season you know you need something to balance out like the cheery chipper sing-songy moments, commercialism of the holidays with something dark and sinister. Yeah. All about I that. actually don't disagree with you, Sammy, but for me, I think it's because I see so many of these like dramatic award hopefuls during December and the award season that I've just become like, it's become synonymous with the season to watch some like really like deep dramatic film with all these super award winning stars. Yeah, I also don't know how to describe it, but like summer is TV, winter is movie. Mm. Mm. Okay, I, 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 I agree. I, I can see that. Last thing I'll mention is uh, just an anecdote. Julianne Moore is one of the nicest people I've ever interviewed in my entire life. I got to interview her in person for, I think it was the Carrie remake at New York Comic Con. And I've never had someone like look so deeply into my eyes with so much care and attention the way Julianne Moore did. It was like, she just like looked like unbreaking eye contact. I've never felt so heard ever as I did when Julianne Moore listened to me ask questions. Um, and I've always kept that with me. She is just the nicest person. Oh, that's so nice. Shout out to so Julianne Moore. Take that with you if you're a Julianne Moore fan. Uh, Quam, bring us home with the premiere you are most excited about this week. Well, the most, the premiere I'm most excited about is uh, Power Book Three: Raising Canaan, which also premieres this Friday on December first. Uh, let's take a look at the trailer. I just want to let y'all know that I'm done doing what I've been doing. From here on, everything gonna be different. So you thinking? Man, you good now? 
Like I said, Kanan, we got a lot to talk about. I don't take nothing from her no more. I'm trying to make my own money, man. Give her one more shot to make it right between y'all. Hell no. Maori. Everybody got their hustle. We just gotta find ours. Southside is real dangerous right now, Kanan. You working for Neek? I work for me. That's what you don't understand. And this ain't about what you did. It's about who you are. So Power Book 3, Raising Kanan, is the second spinoff to the original 2017 Power series and follows a young Kanan Stark, played by Makai Curtis, as he navigates the criminal, 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 oh my god, criminal empire built by his ruthless mother, Raquel, aka Rock Thomas, played by the awesome Patina Miller. She is just incredible. If you don't know about Patina Miller, go research her. She is just like can do it all. In season two, audience saw the Thomas family encounter new forces entering their territory, taking control of Rock's business, and Kanan finds himself stuck in the middle of wavering loyalties. And he's doing this all while growing up as a teen in the Queens. Um, I love this series. Uh, I love this show. Uh, Power, the original Power series was like, <laughs> like, like a, a, a crime drama soap opera to me. Uh, <laughs> Because it was so dramatic, it was so funny. But I love that they start building on this cinematic universe. Um, and Kanan was a, a great place to go because Kanan, the original Kanan was played by 50 Cent. Um, and you, you really don't know too much about his character, his backstory. And so being able to go back into his life and see how he became the ruthless Kanan Stark uh, that we know in the original Power series, I just thought was a brilliant move. And I will also say that Makai Curtis, is a pretty cool guy. I interviewed him uh, a few years ago when the show was first premiering, and we've been we've been friends ever since. Uh, we follow each other on Instagram, and like I said, Patina Miller, uh, she did not follow me on Instagram, but <laughs> <laughs> she's also very incredible. She's uh, just super talented, um, and she gives her, her all in the show. And sometimes, you know, she's putting the show on her back. Um, and so I'm excited for season three. I don't think Patina Miller is going to be out. I don't think Rock is out. Uh, I think she's somehow going to be dragged back into the uh to the underworld of crime and uh all that good stuff um have you either seen the show or have seen the original power series so i have watched i had watched some of the original power i have not seen any of the spinoffs but i was going to ask you like is there a hierarchy in terms of all of the spinoffs and their quality like is two and three just as good as power book four or is there like is there a weak link in the bunch so i haven't watched uh power book four i think it's the one with tommy um mm -hmm. tommy it was always like way over the top to me even in the original series so i can only imagine how much more over the top he is in his own show um i watched power book two and respectfully not my favorite uh, uh, respectfully, it's not my favorite. I, I, me personally, I prefer Raising Kanan. I just love it. it's much more gritty. It feels more grounded uh, than Power Book Two. Uh, but I, I don't think anything is topping the original Power series. Um, I think uh, the the original show is just iconic for it, kind of kicking all this off in its own right. Um, there's so many iconic moments um, in the original series. I love the way this. There was a thread of all the like absolute savage stuff that uh, the original character Ghost says, and my, one of my favorites is uh, he's talking to his estranged wife, uh, and he just lost his, uh, his 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 other lover, and he he says to his wife, he said he said, "Have some respect. I just lost the love of my life." Ooh, brutal. And it's so hilarious because the way he says it, it's just like, bro. <laughs> You're talking to the mother of your children. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, the way it, it comes, like, I'm saying it, it sounds so callous, but in, in the moment, it's just absolutely hilarious because it's also so savage. Um, I mean, you got to respect this franchise. Four whole series that all do really well with critics and all perform really well on TV, so they're doing something right. I mean, I can't, unless I'm just forgetting, maybe, like, Law and Order is the closest you get to that many spinoffs that are also performing well and critically acclaimed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really incredible what um, 
the creatives behind uh, this whole series were able to do and just creating this, um, you know, not cinematic universe, but TV universe, you know, where you have all these interconnecting threads going out, going um, at the same time. Um, and, you know, it just keeps you invested into the, the to the to the power universe um, with all of them kind of like being staggered throughout uh, the year. So, yeah, you can never really escape powers like when one season ends and you have another one popping right up. And you're like, oh, OK, back in back into it. Um, so, yeah, catch that on Stars December 1st. Perfect. And you can check out all the TV shows we just discussed and so much more simply by saying what to watch into your Xfinity voice remote. 